here you will perfectly see the crazy lifesteal that Sludge Bomb Hex Gengar has. And we're still a Haunter right here, we're doing this Rotom. Unfortunately, my team is just fighting the 2v2. Both end up dropping and now I'm in a terrible situation. But I'm able to yoink the Rotom, the Rotom dealing a lot of damage as well in that little fight. I'm able to dodge away from the Snorlax with the Unite move and we get the double takedown and the oh so satisfying score. Yo, you're watching Shirko, we're back with some more Pokemon Unite and in this video we will be checking out Gengar with that Sludge Bomb and Hex build. I know a lot of you guys really really love that build, I think it's really fun to play, however I really think it's Eh, you know, I still really prefer that Shadow Ball Dream Eater build because with this one you really are left super weak early game. However, it is 100% an absolute beast in the late game, guys. If you can get to the late game, which you will see me do pretty well here because I will actively try to avoid some of these early game fights while you don't have the Hex, while you're only sitting at that Sludge Bomb, you're truly, truly useless, trust me. But yeah, you will also see the new buff, of course, the spell vamp that they added, the lifesteal on your uh, moves and on your magic damage charged attack and uh, at level 5. And it really comes in super clutch with that Hex Sludge Bomb combo. But I still think Gengar is just very underwhelming. I think it needs some big buffs still. Uh, I'm looking forward to when it becomes really good because I, I think it's really fun. I think both builds are super fun, man. I used to really hate that Sludge Bomb Hex build, but uh, I played a couple of games today and I'm starting to like it more and more because I just realized, okay, I am useless early, just like this. See, what I should have done here, I should have gone back and just cleared my own jungle instead of being greedy to get this middle, these middle lobsters because the Absol, of course, an absolute monster in the early game, complete opposite of my Gengar here, is just able to completely chase me down. Before we get into the rest of this gameplay, man, which actually was really, really interesting. I think uh, the late game, very interesting. I'm not gonna say it was crazy good, I, I'm not gonna say it was crazy trash, I'm just gonna say it was definitely very interesting. Um, and be, of course the held items and stuff, make sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell, uh, so you don't miss any further Pokemon Unite content on this channel. But yeah, as you can see man, I am pretty happy here going back into the jungle, we got the Hex finally and now we really become quite strong and now we can really really even fight this Absol but again it is tough especially in higher rank games to get to this point and here I'm doing something cheeky because I know how strong I am with the Hex at level 7 that is one of your big power spikes I have the lifesteal as well I, I'm just confident I can 1v1 this Absol so we really go deep we end up not even meeting it in the jungle it was already in that top but I got that buff. So I'm looking at a pretty good position right here. Once again, we just go top, we wait until the Absol is gone, is backported, and then all I have in my eyes right now is that Rotom. You've seen my previous video probably where I talk about the Rotom buff with that Absol gameplay. And here, once again, you will just see how good we can do with that Rotom. And you've seen this clip in the intro, man. It was Mental. It was absolutely mental, man. We're able to steal the Rotom. We're able to get the 1v2 pop up, man. Use the Unite move to dodge the Body Slam. And even though you've seen it already, I think it is really fun to watch again. Absolutely insane. But yeah, Rotom pops the point, hacks it. We're able to score. My teammate is able to score. He should have collected these balls here, to be honest. Could have scored 30. He ended up only scoring 25, but eh. Not that big of a deal, I guess. And uh, yeah, we're in a really good position. The enemies, I believe, got Dreadnought. I'm not even sure. I really was too focused on my commentary here. Wasn't paying attention, but you've seen it, I'm sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm still in a good position, no matter what happened right there. Even if they got the uh, Dreadnought, I'm just, you know, the, the scoring. Scoring so many points gives you so much experience, man. Scoring these 40 points, getting this, and then 
we go through the bushes i saw the absol is really low i knew the vesper queen camp is about to respawn i knew i can just go deep and look at this damage right now level 11 man we do so much damage unfortunately the Cinderace finishes us off with the Unite move, but I got two takedowns, I got the Vespi Queen camp, and I didn't even use my own Unite move. So I think that's a really good trade right there. My team focusing around that top, trying to defend that point. I will, of course, join them there instantly, I believe. Shurko? Shurko? Yes, I am. No? Go top! Okay, I'm going bot, I guess. Never mind. I misremembered that. I should have definitely gone top. I guess what I was thinking is that my team would be able to defend 2v3. They were, kind of, and I was able to score at the bottom. So I guess it was worth, but we could have also pushed top. But yeah, I, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to make my way back to that Rotom right there. Here, I'm just chilling. I'm just really patient here, waiting for that Absol, because I know it wants its buff. And I know I am very far ahead of it. I know I'm really strong, and I'm just waiting. It does the lobster first, I'm still waiting. It jumped back over the wall, but I know it's gonna come back. It needs the buff. As soon as it uses that sucker punch, and boom, I go in, I steal the buff. I get the takedown as well, and I will score these 9 points, and I'm gonna be able to um go to that rotom because my team already took the dreadnought they were already in a good position but now once again i told you guys this is going to be an interesting gameplay i'm just crazy right here i am taking it really personal with this absol taking taking uh, getting my getting that takedown onto me at level five so we just keep camping it i just keep sitting in that bot and we just completely demolish this bot side right now the enemies are demolishing the top side again i don't think this was the best gameplay because i keep staying even longer i'm trying to predict the absol jumping into the middle it decides not to it goes bot it gets the takedown onto that little guy and again i'm just chilling here i know it needs to farm these camps somehow i decide to just go for that lobster and here i'm pretty sure i'm gonna spot it here i spot the little rabbit and now again man the late game beast look at this two hexes and it's gone we hex over the slowing zone to that odino get that takedown and once again we're just able to return so much damage full heal blocks the sink uh, I didn't even talk about that yet, but I think full heal is really, really amazing on this Sludge Hexbomb for, uh, Gengar. Because you don't really have anything else um, that can stop you other than CC. And once again, man, we're going, we're still staying deep here. I'm hoping that the enemies will come and try to attack me here. I realized they're just going to defend my uh teammates from pushing bots so i end up going back again this was really interesting macro i think it's fun to see was it the best eh. Eh. not really man we could have just helped our team a little bit more but we did take out a lot of the enemies so it was still it ended up being pretty good especially because i got that double takedown in the end so that was really good but yeah here once again we go super deep by the way I completely forgot to mention the held items, but it's the held items I always use on Gengar, guys. Score shield and the double glasses, wise glasses and choice specs. I don't think there's anything to budge about that. You can go for the special attack specs if you're feeling really risky. The only reason why I haven't showcased that yet is because I didn't buy them yet or I didn't level them up yet. But yeah, here I end up going way too deep, unfortunately, man. I should have just stayed in the bush, but I felt a little bit insecure about my decision making because i was sitting in so many bushes this game and i'm a huge fan of faker but that is a little bit too much so we end up just dying my team is not able to last it the zapdos it was pretty much a 50 50 it could have gone either way both cinderace is just basic attacking it the enemy got it in the end and they are able to score a ton but here i'm gonna skip a little bit because they're scoring a ton however I still think we can flip this around. We're definitely in a huge disadvantage, but two of the enemies are down. And as you can see, I press the no button. Usually you should surrender this, but I, I, I don't know. I, I felt like with this late game beast Gengar, I want to try, you know, 
might as well waste these 30 seconds of my life if we lose, but I really want to try. And I'm glad I ended up trying, okay? Because you will see my damage is mental, man. Look at this. Absolutely mental damage. We're able to do so much. We jump away from the sing. We use the full heal as well, so we don't get, um, you know, CC'd. And then we're just able to once again attack this little, really tough. And look at this damage. Now the Cinderace comes in as well, but I just heal so much and deal so much damage. Obviously, we weren't able to come back, but I had a really good 1v2, 1v3 at the end even, if we count the Froki, so I think it was worth not surrendering. 12 takedowns, 1 assist, unfortunately a loss. I think it was a good game, I upvoted my whole team because it was honestly... Guys, do not play like this, I was really... I was really not sure whether it's worth just camping these stupid bushes. Yo, Shirko, Shirko, you need to show the damage. Don't just cancel that recording, you stupid dumbo. But yeah, damage abysmal. I wasn't in that many fights. But um, yeah, only 20% damage dealt. Again, I'm not the best Gengar Sludge Bomb Hex user. For me, definitely the Shadow Ball Dream Eater build fits my playstyle a lot more. I like to play aggressive in the early game already. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I definitely think this build received a big buff compared to the other build because the other build already has a lot of healing from the dream eater this one really benefits a lot from the lifesteal but at the end of the day i still think gengar has so many issues man compared to these broken junglers like zera aura and talonflame they're just so strong and the cinderace you just pale in comparison to them make sure to subscribe ring the notification bell and i will see you guys in the next one peace